Hello, my name is Julia Streets and I'm very flattered to have been asked by Swift if I would offer some ideas and some tips, some techniques about how to present well over digital channels. I think the reason why they've asked me is because during the day, uh, my day job is advising businesses on their business development, marketing and communication strategies. So a lot of that is down to messaging, the content. But in addition to that, we also advise uh, rising executives and senior executives about how to present well. Mostly, of course, that used to be done on, on stages. Now we're doing it on camera, down the lens, as I am indeed right now, of my laptop. So welcome to my home in London. There is another dynamic to my life, which I think is another reason why Swift asked me, is that I'm also a recovering stand-up comedian. Uh, I've sold out a one-woman show around the UK. I've performed at some of the biggest comedy venues and on some of the biggest comedy stages. Uh, all over the all over the country and of course now i've taken this into a slightly different area in that when i bring the two worlds together my business knowledge and also my performing experience and i'm very flattered because i get asked to host conferences all over the world including of course cybos and customer events awards um all manner of panel discussions fireside chats uh, with people used to be on an airplane a lot now I'm in my study. So, so welcome. I hope that what I offer to you today will be useful in some way, shape or form. And I'm going to divide what we're going to talk about into three key areas. The first is how to frame your shot well, how to do all of the setup so you come across as clearly and as well as you possibly can. The second is we're going to think about you as a speaker. So what do I do to prepare and how do I speak in a way that's going to be compelling and interesting, particularly if I'm talking over a long period of time? And then the third area is just a collection. It's an amalgamation of tips and techniques that I've sort of collected along the way. Again, I hope that they'll be useful. So let's start with the frame of the shot. The first thing that I would say to everybody is raise your camera. It's really important that your camera is at eye level. All too often, we will watch you know, TV news channels inviting guests on, guests who are talking down their noses at laptops on desks. It sends terrible non-verbal signals, if I'm honest. And the second thing is, frankly, who wants to look up my nostrils? So the point is, raise your camera. It actually has a massive impact. The second is to think about your sound. So at the moment, I'm using a lapel mic because I'm giving a presentation. When I'm participating in any sort of panel discussion, I'll use earbuds with a microphone attached. And of course, many people use the wireless earbuds and indeed full cans, absolutely fine. And what I would counsel you to do is if you are doing any sort of an event, it is always worth doing a sound check first. So if you are invited, to, first, first of all, to make sure you can get onto the platform because firewalls in organizations may put in con uh, restraints and uh, constricting um, capabilities. So make sure you can get onto the platform in good time. Make sure you sound great and also that your camera is working and that your Wi-Fi is stable. And another tip I give people is it is worth investing in an ethernet cable and running it literally straight from your Wi-Fi into the side or your, your wireless router into the side of your, your machine, your laptop. Keep it as robust as you can. And by the way, tell your family to switch off all the games and all the streaming devices at the same time. So now let's talk about uh, light. Light is interesting. So right now I'm recording this at about 8.30 in January in London. So it's very dark outside. So at the moment, I'm relying on an artificial light. I have an overhead light that is throwing light down on me, but also I have a secondary light source. It is always worth having a secondary light source uh, that is simply a desk lamp. I'm aiming it away from me at a white wall or a light colored wall behind the laptop that then is bouncing back onto me. So I don't have any glare on me necessarily, but I do have a light bouncing back couple of things you may want to play with. One is a selfie light that can sit around the lens of your camera in your laptop or on your desktop and then you can simply switch the light on and that will throw light on you as well. Only thing I would say about that is I do quite often present with glasses and when you do that of course you they run the risk of getting reflections in glasses. So do bear that in mind. Uh, the other is sometimes if I'm doing certain events and I do need a bit more light I've invested in a selfie ring, a light ring that again will, will diffuse the light and shine it on me. I don't think you need to invest very much in all this kit, but it can make the world a difference uh, depending upon your setup as well. 
So the other thing that's worth thinking about is um, let's talk about how you communicate. Now, when we're on stages, we talk about making ourselves very big. We talk about filling halls and auditoria of, uh, of, of people when you're talking at, at events, um, particularly the, the ilk of Cybos or any of these major events as well. Right now, there's one thing to remember, which is we are all broadcasters now. So watch the broadcasters, watch the people in the news channels and on TV shows. You think, why is it that I've actually listened to every single word that they've said? What is it about them that's made them particularly compelling? And then copy their techniques. There are a few tips I would give you. One of them is sit very still. I'm currently on a desk swing chair, so it is very natural that I might start moving around. It's really important that I keep both my feet on the floor, I sit back in the chair and I sit up. Occupy a decent chunk of your screen. If you sit back and you're too small, it can actually diminish you as a speaker. So sit forward, occupy your screen and own your space. The other thing that's worth thinking about is use of hands use them. Naturally we do, but make sure you use your hands with emphasis. Find a neutral position you're happy with and then when you want to make a point, you can use them. When you're trying to point out really key points, they're your greatest aid. And they also draw the listener in by seeing when you begin to use your hands, you can really draw people in to become very engaging. And then of course your other greatest tool is your voice. We've all listened to monotonic speakers drone on for far too long. So don't be them. Throw your voice around a little. Think about times when you can raise your voice for greater emphasis and at other times when you may want to deepen it and be a little bit more considered. Also change your pace. Sometimes you're very, very charismatic and very energetic and very passionate and other times quite deeply quiet, calm, slower and considerate and space can be your greatest friend. So think about how you throw your voice around, literally thinking about how you throw it almost around the screen. So sometimes you might want to stretch your voice out. And if you start thinking to the corners of your screen, you begin to think about how you can talk in a very, uh, very multifarious, multifarious, is that the word I'm looking for? In, in, in ways that have many, many different varieties because it is all about variety and avoid patterns. Quite often we find ourselves and we really listen to other speakers is that find we they, they create patterns. So you might start a point where you start with great energy and you slow down again. And then you might start your next point with great energy and then naturally drop it away again. And then your next point is made in a very similar fashion. What you're doing there is repeated patterns. And it's always worth remembering that when you repeat patterns, you essentially draw your audience into a lullaby. You are lulling them with repeated patterns. So try to mix it up as much as you can. And of course, your greatest asset is your content. With bullet points at the end of your point is a great moment just to change your energy a little bit. Where the speech is to go through it and think about where you're going to change your emphasis. And of course, language is a massive gift. There are words that will give you great opportunity for emphasis. So use them. So think about how you uh, variety is the spice of life, as they say. So think about the mixture for that. And then I just wanted to offer some final thoughts. As I've said, watch the broadcasters. We are all broadcasters now. Watch the broadcasters and copy what they do. The other thing that's worth thinking about is actually how you use notes. Now, I have my notes down here. And it's been perfectly acceptable, I believe, to be looking down from time to time. But it's very important that you do return to the camera. What's weird at the moment is that, of course, while I'm talking to you, the dominant thing that I can see on my screen is me. So my eye is naturally drawn to me, which I always think is quite weird. And it's important to throw my eye contact back at the camera on a regular basis because it draws people in. So what I do do is I put a post-it note right next to the camera because actually even that shot of colour will draw my eye back up again. It's also really important when you are speaking on panels and you have lots of people in different boxes on your screen is it you naturally will be talking down to the panelists because we're in discussion. Remember the camera is there because it's the audience really that you're talking to. So I hope that this is helpful. I hope that there are tips and tricks here when I've been talking about the frame and the setup, 
what I've been talking about the lighting and the sound, what I've been talking about how you can use your voice with greatest emphasis to be a great speaker. Remember, we are all broadcasters now. And of course, it goes without saying, if we can ever help, give us a call. Love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Swift, for asking me. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.